What's up everyone? I hope you're doing really, really well today and having a very blessed week. Today we're going to talk about an evil spirit. This one is called the Jezebel spirit. God first revealed this preacher to me through dreams and no sooner had he done so than <laughs> I began seeing her everywhere and other people in my world did too. Jezebel was an evil queen in the Old Testament. Soon after the days of Solomon, the nation of Israel, which the likes of Joshua and David had built, was torn in two. It was torn into the kingdom of Israel, whose capital was Samaria, and the kingdom of Judah, whose capital was Jerusalem. Jezebel was the queen under the King Ahab's rule of Israel. Jezebel was a witch, <laughs> an evil prophetess who had come from a pagan nation. She introduced all kinds of heinous pagan religions into Israel, such as Baal worship. And whenever there was Baal worship, babies were always sacrificed. Metal statues would be erected in the middle of the streets and a fire would be lit beneath them so they'd be piping hot and babies were put into their outstretched arms to burn to death to appease this evil, satanic assassin against God's people. Asherah prophet also operated in the hundreds. They worshipped a demon who was known as the Queen of Heaven. All these things were going on in the nation that God had rescued from Egypt and set apart to be his own prized possession, the apple of his eye. Jezebel ruled and reigned for a very long time. And even after she and Ahab croaked, their kids continued to tear the nation of Israel apart, even infecting Judah spiritually. In one particular famous showdown, the prophet Elijah went up Mount Carmel, where he faced off against Jezebel's evil prophets. They began slashing themselves in the hope that their blood would appease their dark gods, send fire down from heaven. <laughs> Elijah just stood there just making fun of them, like, you know, perhaps your god is on the toilet. And after <laughs> hours and hours of this, Yahweh... Father God Almighty responded to Elijah's petition and fire came down from the sky and uh, a famine that had lasted years came to an end. She in turn sent a messenger to him and said, Elijah, <laughs> nice job of the day. P.S. you're a dead man. Good one. If she'd wanted him dead, she would have sent an assassin. Hello, she was the queen. I'm sure she had lots of them on speed dial. <laughs> Instead, she played mind games with him. Elijah ran away, sat by a brook, hid in a mountain, and literally felt suicidal. He felt like his entire mission and purpose in life to be a prophet of God and the light onto the nation had just entirely imploded there and then. He was so afraid of the ramifications of being obedient to his calling and staying in his lane. A lot of course <laughs> responds in a very unexpected way and literally just like sent in an angel to make him dinner. I said, here, eat this. <laughs> and then gave him a best friend because, you know, food and friends, what else is worth living for? Jezebel was eventually killed. God plucked a man out of obscurity and sent him to Jezebel's palace, where the eunuchs in the palace grabbed the witch, threw her at the window, she fell Nyeek! all the way down and died, and then was eaten by dogs. <laughs> Apart from her hands, which I'm still awaiting revelation on. The actual woman Jezebel died that day. Okay, do not misunderstand me. I'm not saying, you know, she's still out there or she's a ghost. In Revelation, Chapter 2. John writes the letter to the church in Thyatira. And he says this. 
But why do you let that Jezebel, who calls herself a prophet, mislead my dear servants into cross-denying, self-indulging religion? I gave her a chance to change her ways, but she has no intention of giving up her career in the god business. I'm about to lay her low, along with her partners, as they play their sex and religion games. God was not in any way suggesting that the dead Jezebel had come back. However, there was an evil spirit at work in that church who had taken on similar characteristics of the actual Jezebel <laughs> that we read about in Kings. From New Testament scriptures, we can infer that all the talk of the evil kings in the Old Testament actually give revelation on the evil kings, despots, tyrants, powers and principalities at work in the New Testament. One is more carnal and physical, one is more spiritual and largely unseen, but we can see the spirit in operation in our lives today. God gave me a dream a few years ago, and in that dream an angel came to me and said, Brendan, <laughs> you were stabbed by a Jezebel spirit. I woke up and said to myself, well, I think I would know if I've been stabbed, excuse me what, so you can keep all your evil spirits off, Mr. Angel. Thank you very much. <laughs> well, about one hour and 15 minutes later, <laughs> I got this stabbing sensation in the pit of my stomach. I was sick for three days. <laughs> it was nasty. I have seldom been in more pain. I have, I felt something similar once. And I was also <laughs> being stabbed by an evil spirit. <laughs> Or I had another dream, and in that dream, I was surrounded by a band of witches. And God told me there is an area of your life in which these evil demonic witches, these evil spirits, have infiltrated. They've taken over. And I'm giving you the seer gift, and giving you the prophetic, insightful revelation to know that they're there. Honestly, I didn't know what to do with that. <laughs> I was like, okay, God, uh, thank you. Next. <laughs> I didn't know how to appropriate what I had seen. I had another dream and I had just started a new job. And in that dream, I was on my hands and knees crawling on the floor of a school. And there was a hole in the wall and I was listening in. And I'd hear a Nazi broadcast on the radio. And God was saying, in the school that you're in, and I just started this new job, he said there are evil spirits talking against you to your boss, and what they're saying is heinous, what they're saying are lies, but they're out to get you, they want to destroy you. And at that time, my boss came to me in the physical <laughs> and said, hey, this woman said this about you. Those two students over there said this about you. And I realized that the evil spirits were in my new school and they were manipulating female students in the school to operate against me. They were going to my boss, who was a guy, and abusing the channel of his ear to turn his heart against me. Why is that significant? Because what Jezebel did. Jezebel was an evil, evil queen, a horrible woman, but she didn't by and large, operate of her own free will. We often see her whispering to Ahab, Hey, you know, honey, I wouldn't tolerate that if I were you. Uh -uh -uh. Chicken wings. <laughs> she manipulated the patriarch to exact her will, to avenge her offences, to get payback when things hadn't gone her way. The attacks that came against me in the school were so horrible and so personal, that eventually I threw my hands in the air and said, that's it, God, I quit. I am going into that school today and I'm giving them my letter of resignation. I'm going to tell them I'll be here for four more weeks and then I'm gone. <laughs> God out of the plans. I fell asleep on the bus to work. And while I slept, I saw myself in a dream, standing on a beach, this beautiful, beautiful long beach with a an amazing blue sea. 
and in my arms I held a witch. She had long scraggy hair, very very pale face, long black dress, but I knew she was a witch. I walked into the sea with her, and I chucked her into the water. And as I chucked her in, I heard Holy Spirit say, If you say to this mountain, jump, it will jump into the sea and it will drown. <laughs> So I woke up and lo and behold, I prayed on my head that I prayed before. And I said, Almighty God, I prayed for a job, you gave me that one. I prayed for a school, that's where you put me for now. I need to make money so I can best serve you. A job is the best way to do it, Lord. And I say, greater is he that's in me than he that is in that school. So there's a lion in me, the lion of Judah, Almighty God. That is more powerful and stronger and scarier than any demon in that school. So lion of Judah within me, roar. Chase those suckers out. I do not want to enter that school and have to go toe to toe with every evil spirit in there. They know I'm coming. And you know what? I want them to tremble at that thought. And I want them gone before I step foot in that school. That school is my school. That school therefore is holy ground. They have no authority there. They have no right there. I rebuke every single one of them. Get out right now. Honestly, had anybody <laughs> heard me praying, they would have been like, what is wrong with this guy? Does he need a doctor? <laughs> but you know what? I entered the, the foyer of the school and I could sense in the spiritual atmosphere that something was different, that they were gone. That has happened repeatedly since then. In different areas of my life, evil spirits, Jezebel spirits, will manipulate women. It can happen in a business, at church, in your family, at summer camp. These things have harassed me my entire life. I just didn't know what they were. But all of a sudden I was clued in. And I was like, okay, God, I know what to do now. And why were they coming after me? Well, Jezebel knew that Elijah was a prophet and that he could see exactly what was going on. So she came after him. And the reason Jezebel's spirits are honing in on you is because you, through the cross of Jesus, are united with his people and have direct access to Almighty God. And that terrifies her. So therefore, she tries to cripple you and scare you and they make you think you're going crazy and play mind games with you so that you will not take her out. Don't misunderstand me, friends. I'm not saying that every woman in a position of power or every woman with a bad attitude has a Jezebel spirit. <laughs> but this spirit primarily targets women. There is another spirit, uh, the Absalom spirit, which primarily targets men, but we'll look at that in a, in a later video. If what I'm saying resonates with you right now, if you feel bullied, oppressed, <laughs> ostracized, or maligned in your church, your family, or your workplace, and a woman is doing it, and you don't just think it's a natural thing. You don't just think it's a soul thing. You think there's something spiritual behind it. I'm going to go through a number of indicators that it could be a Jezebel spirit that you're encountering. People who are manipulated by a Jezebel spirit often see problems with everyone and everything. Never with themselves. <laughs> they try to set up a kingdom through a king, usually a patriarch, usually a guy. They get control over people through fear and intimidation. They operate against the prophetic voice because the prophets are the ones who can expose them. They justify the pain they cause. These so big bad evil Christians are so offensive. She sees herself as other people's saviour. She's always the solution, never the problem. She zeroes in on those in authority. She manipulates situations, seeking to gain recognition and appear spiritual, holy and well-meaning. She knows when to turn on the sweetness and when to turn on the sour face. She assumes a mask of false humility for a time. It's usually short-lived. Those under the influence of a Jezebel spirit often round up their own band of prophets or disciples who come into agreement with their evil motives. Her opinion is the last word on the subject. 
there's no accountability. Her family life is often shaky or traumatised or has got other spiritual issues going on. She rounds up weak-minded people and teaches them her false doctrine. Carriers of Jezebel spirit often have areas of insecurity in their lives and they turn to pride as a solution to the insecurity issue. A lot of the manipulations are very demure, flattery based. Encouraging someone is good, but if it does not line up with the word of God, it's not from him. She wants to have all the answers. However, when everything goes kablooey, <laughs> she's nowhere to be found. Promotion is more important than revelation. She's privileged by connection. Strategic alliances are formed to help in her self-elevation. The spirit reproduces very quickly. I had other dreams about a different area of my life in which was Jezebel spirit. That one was one tough cookie and no sooner had it been gotten rid of than another one came and then that one came back. Promotion is seen as a way to prevent pain. Those who are under the influence of this spirit are often possessive, jealous, domineering, mean-spirited, planning, particularly in manipulative ways. She creates soul ties. She loves to be needed and she wants to be wanted. People carrying a Jezebel spirit on their back are often vindictive and queen of treaties. <laughs> they know who to make alliances and friendships with. Again, the aim is always to come together in a way that promotes oneself. They might come across as hyper-spiritual, but they're inherently rigged against the things of Holy Spirit. They're fault finders, they sow discord, and apologies are not accepted. Again, just to reiterate, this is not an anti-women in ministry teaching. We will come to the Absalom spirit in a later video. <laughs> what this is saying is that those who have soul wounds or a lot of pride in their lives are particularly susceptible to this spirit. Because remember, from what I've said in previous videos, soul similarities and commonalities are spiritual vulnerabilities. When we have something in common with the enemy, it is a landing strip for the enemy to send there's evil planes <laughs> laced with bombs and set to detonate. What do Jezebel spirits do? They cause confusion. They lead you into depression because you're looking around thinking, can nobody else see what I see? Am I the only one who sees this? Am I the problem? Is it all in my head? And when you're doubting yourself, you doubt your calling too. That in turn leads to discouragement and it can even lead to anger towards other people. Why can no one else see this? Am I going crazy or is everyone else just stupid? And that sense of anxiety, if not nipped in the bud, can even lead to suicidal feelings, which we saw with Elijah. So for anyone who registers with what I'm saying right now, and you feel like there may indeed be a Jezebel spirit targeting your life, I want you to know, the person was created in the image of Almighty God. Jesus loves them, he died for them, He's coming back for them. But that spirit, though they may have made a home for it in their lives, and I'm not even implying that they know it's there, has no place. So I want you to get your soul healed. Say, Jesus, this evil sucker has caused me to feel anxious. But you know what, Jesus? Today I choose faith. This evil spirit has caused me to feel depressed. But you know what? Joy is my strength, so I'm choosing joy. This evil creature wants me to feel confused. Confusion is etymologically linked to warfare. And you say, I am in a war, Jesus, but I am not losing this war. I'm going in victoriously because you commit victoriously. And you find peace in that statement. And you let the peace that's within you drown out every assault of the enemy. The enemy wants you to feel small. You say, the universe lives in me, so you're the tinsy tiny one. When the enemy speaks to you, you say, I bind that 
that has no place in my life. I take that hostage, I put handcuffs on that dark word and I chuck it out. And you can even use the very same scripture the Holy Spirit gave me in that dream. If you say to this mountain, be cast into the sea, it will drown. And I'm telling you, it will. Use the authority that's within you. Use the power that's within you. Say, Jesus, nothing that is said is true. I reject those lies. I cast them out. Jesus, wash me clean of anything that came into agreement with the enemy. Who did I think I was believing that filthy creature as opposed to Jesus Christ? Heal me, Jesus. Fill me up and heal me. Fill me up and heal me. Fill me up and heal me, Jesus, your light. Heal every wound, every place of anxiety and hurt and offence and grievance within me. Heal it, Jesus. And you use your authority and you drive it out. More than not, you'll probably have to do it in isolation. If the rapport is there, you may even have to tell the person in authority what God has shown you. Because remember, the Jezebel spirit ultimately wants the person in authority to come into agreement with them to validate how they attack God's people. In my experience, I have mainly had to deal with these things alone. If the other prophetic friends, great. D don't make it a uh, we hate our brother or sister in Christ session. Remember, they're just a person. Anyone can fall victim to this. Your enemy is the unseen enemy, the invisible enemy, the evil spirit, not the brother or sister in Christ. So get your prophetic friends together to rebuke it. If you have a good relationship with your spiritual leader or pastor or authority or boss and, and they're Christian, they're open to this kind of thing, you can even say it to them. Hey, I believe God has shared something with me and I just want us to come together in agreement and prayer. What do you think? And after the battle is over and the spirit is gone, do your very, very best to reconcile with your brother or sister. Restore them gently. Because we can all come into agreement with the enemy. We can all create room for him in our lives. And I believe most of us have done so over the years. We probably just didn't realise it. But restore them. Jesus' will is not that they should live in condemnation or be exiled or kicked out. He wants them to be together so long as they're open to the possibility of a letting go of the darkness and entering into the fullness and freedom of Jesus. And it's a hard teaching, it's not easy, especially if you're, you're in the thick of it. But I pray that your inner man or woman be strengthened, restored, that you get up, stand on your feet again, and fight this thing until you have your victory. Jesus Christ has overcome everything in this world, that victory lives in you. So God bless you. If you need prayer, write a request in the box below and I'll be happy to pray for you. Take care and until next time, God bless you. Live victoriously and kick those Jezebels to the curb. Bye.